good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what's most important. Just think about we can come together and celebrate the goodness of God. Amen. You know, I've I, uh, been thinking a lot about all the things that God has done. And can you think about it? And I just feel very strongly that the one thing he wants us to do is keep lifting him up and never forget what he's done for us. I mean, that, that's really run powerful. That's really run powerful to me in the last few days, in the last few months. It's just building God up. And making him bigger than your problems. Sometimes we, we shift it around the other way. Oh, God, I got this going on. God, I got this going on. And the young folks and people say that favorite phrase, I got it. You know, you hear that a lot of times. I hear it when I teach at school. I got it. I got this, Tim. I got this. And God is saying the same thing. You know what, Tim? I got this. I can handle this. No matter what you're going through. And one of the things that as I was... Uh, uh, privilege to have this opportunity to get up here and uh, to declare the goodness of God was in Deuteronomy chapter 7. And, and think about how valuable you are to God. I mean, that's what sometimes I think we lose that. How valuable we are. Somebody willing to die for you. Think about that. Think about what Jesus did for you. I mean, the, the crucifixion is probably one of the hardest things to, to realize how horrible it was when he was willing to go. And I always feel the victory was won in the garden. Yes. I always feel that. Because it was a wrestle. Because you think about all the sins, past, past, and future, getting ready to get dumped on him. Mm -hmm. And who was sinless. And I always get the picture of taking a perfectly white, pure white cloth and dumping it in the vat of oil. That, that's what I get the picture of. So ugliness, you know, we, we, we look at sin and, and sometimes we, we put sinners in two categories. You know, we got the dirty dog center over here. The real dirty dog one over here. Oh, man, they're living a horrible life. But the one over here, not so bad. You know, I, I deal with speed limits because I, I have to do this with the structure. But see, we don't, the guy that goes five miles an hour, out an hour, we don't get mad at him. He, you know, that's, that's all right. You know, he'll give you that. But the guy that goes 10 miles, oh, that's a dirty center right there. That's a center right there. You know, he's talking around the road. If he goes 20 miles an hour, oh, God help.
like when you walk across the street, you hold your kid's hand. You hold and make sure he gets safety across the street. That's what God does with us. He holds our hand. He walks us. Have you ever been to that point where, where so many things was going on in your life that you cried so much that tears, when the tears didn't come no more, but he was still crying? Yeah. And you know what God does? I, I love I love how God just is so compassionate and so understanding. You know, some people just, oh, just suck it up. You, see, you know, you just need to get out of that. So, but God, you know, he does this. You know, my son, what's going on? Mm -hmm. I, I love that compassion of God. Yes. You know, how can we handle a situation when you cry out to God and say, you know what? The best thing to deal with God is to be honest with him. Mm -hmm. If you screwed up, tell God I screwed up. You know, ain't no use lying. Ain't no lying to God. I always say that's what I say a lot when I, when I, when I preach to them. I said, How, why do people sin with the shades down? Why do they do that? They pull the shades down and hope nobody sees them. Well, God's in there too. How are you, you going to hide from him? That's what happened to Moses, you know? Right. Moses would kill the jet What about said, he looked this way and that way. The problem is he didn't look up. That was Moses' problem. He should have looked up. God was looking. You can't hide. I don't care what. It said if you make the bed in hell, God, you're still there. Yeah. Right? I always say if you make your bed in hell, you plan on coming back the next day. <laughs> you're going to make your bed up and you're going to stay down there. Yeah. No, what we should do is get a picture of God's holiness. Yeah. And never forget. And, and think about this. In verse 7, the Lord and I have set aside upon you and choose you because you're more in number than any other people. For you were the fewest of all people. But because I love this, the Lord loves you. How powerful is that? Yes. And when God loves, you know, when you look at the Bible, everything is bigger than God. When he blesses you abundant, that's what he means. His yes. love is always bigger. Thank you. His, always, his love is always more grand. It's like you get the picture sometimes when you get somebody, when you scrape your knee or something like that. What does your mom need to do to scrape your knee? Now, we think it's, we think it's tragedy. You know? <laughs> scrape your knee. Yeah, mom always kisses it. You kiss it and make, you know, make it better. Yeah. I didn't know saliva kills your knee, but... Yeah. I guess it does in some way. But it's not, it's, it has nothing to do with that. It's the fact that, that she saw that you had a problem and she kissed it and made it better. Or you, know, you had trouble sleeping at night. See, I, you know, I, I, I watch I watch how the, the grandkids are and how I deal with my own kids and how that, you know, you, you get better parenting the more kids you have because you kind of understand a little more than that first kid. You get a little, you get a little better. That, that first kid is, is kind of a trial and error, that person. <laughs> but by the time you have four or five, you understand, hey, I, I need to be a little better with these. You know, it's time for you to go to sleep. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. You know what? I'm, I'm kind of having trouble sleeping. And you know what? You learn. You go in there. Hey, what's wrong? You know, you have nightmares about something, eat something wrong. Or, you know, Daddy, tell me a story. You know, you know tell me something.
receiving the righteousness of Jesus. And you, you made it easy for me. I wonder what am I going to do? You say all you have to do is uh, say what Jesus did for you and come to church with me. Sometimes they come. my screw up some live stream I'm doing right now. So <laughs> let her be healed in Jesus' yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah.
You know, he just tells them to sit alone. You know, he told Peter, denied him three times. And think about the sad part about Peter is, you know, he told him this is going to happen anyway. But, you know, he denied him three times. And, and Peter, you know, is one of those little grown. Say, You're, you sound like, well, I don't even know him. Well, we know, we know him. You spent the last three and a half years with him. But when Jesus talks to him, you know, when he gets risen, he said, go tell that I have risen, but go tell Peter. Make sure you tell Peter, too. Because he loves him. He never throws that up at Peter. He right. never does. See, some people do that when, when you mess up. Oh, they don't let you ever forget that. Right. Oh, let me tell you that. You might have done something 20 years. I remember you. I remember this. And I tell them the same thing. I said it before. I said, you know what? That happened B.C. B.C. What does that mean? I said before Christ. Let, let's take a look at things that happened after Christ came in my life. Not perfect, but it's a lot better. I'm not where I should be, but I'm on my way to be where I should be. Hallelujah. 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 Someone else. Yes. Yes. Um, two weeks ago I did a tragedy. Um, I was told that the tremor was gone. I was told I felt uh, because I ran my life with all these tumor threads and tumors and, and so forth that took my granddaughter to school. Just to say, you know what, God, I'm just coming. 
for doing anything for works or salvation or anything like that. We're just saying, God, you know what? I love you back. I love you and I appreciate you. You know what that does to a heart of a person? Or just a human person, but to God? You know, it's like it, it just, you can almost see God smiling that, you know what? Here, I, I got a child right here that loves me, that believes in what I'm doing for him. And he appreciates it. There's nothing more, to me, more awful than an ungrateful person. Yeah. Absolutely. You can't give nothing. I mean, if they won a million dollar lottery, why did I win two million? Why did I win three million? Somebody gave them a new car. Well, I'd rather have a Lamborghini. They just gave you a Volkswagen or something, you know. <laughs> They're not, it's a free car. Right. Why don't you be thankful? I think that's really where God wants us to be at, to start being more and more thankful of what we have. Because, yeah. folks, we are blessed. Yeah. I mean, if you woke up this morning, you got a car, clothes, house, and <clears throat> somebody loves you, you got family, whether it's a church family, <clears throat> when you have those things, you're blessed. I mean, it's not too many times we went, and we, we've all had struggles on different things, but it's not too many times you went to, uh, without eating for a day or, or five days or a week, and there's people that don't have any of those, those things, you know? And that's where I feel God wants us to be. So when we worship and praise Him, you know, that praise just rises, and it comes out of here, a pure heart. God, we love you, we love you, love you, and we appreciate you. Yeah. Hallelujah.
he'll do it again and again and again. Lord, thank you for loving us. Hallelujah. The one that's going to have the triple bypass, that you be with us. Because, God, you are the God that healeth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the other sicknesses and diseases that are brought up, God, we know that you are able. There's nothing, there's nothing too hard for you. Oh, sometimes people think it's impossible, it's impossible. But the Bible says, for with God, yeah. hallelujah, for with God, all things are possible. Yes, it doesn't say some things, it doesn't say a few things, it says all things. Yeah. And that's what we need to believe. Father God, we thank you. Jesus Christ, we thank you for dying on the cross for us and reconcile us back to the Father. Because you made all the difference, Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, let us never forget what you've done for us. Let us never forget that. Let us never forget your goodness. Never forget your strength. Lord, that you're the almighty God and wise. Never forget your guidance, your truth, all that you've done for us. Lord, let us remember you every day. Let us just come to you those days and just praise you and praise you and praise you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. His praise shall continue yes. to be above now. All times. That's good times. Bad times. No matter what time. That's all times. That's what it's about. And Lord, we want to thank you this morning. We want to thank you that today you will be lifted up more than ever. Today call out on you, hallelujah, that you would touch our hearts, our minds, and our souls, that Lord, that we will leave differently than we came in. We will get a better picture of you, a better picture of your goodness, your truth, and your mercy, hallelujah, and your compassion, and your understanding. Lord, just keep opening up and opening up, hallelujah, the world. Let us change all ways to reflect you, that's what it's about that people can see that we have been with you. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Yes, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. We're going to speak the word. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you?
always proud of this worship team um, with Brother Tim leading prayer Friday night and uh, this team just entering into the presence of the Lord and just worshiping and ministering unto the Lord. It was it was a, a beautiful time. Uh, if we look at it at man's eyes, it was like, what? But if we look at it with spirit eyes, we can see things that uh, were manifesting. We did record it, and there were songs and new sounds and stuff that were recorded. Um, and I'm excited to go through that DVD uh, that we recorded and uh, glean out the fruit that the Lord uh, let come forth Friday night. So, hallelujah. Go ahead and do that for us.
forever. Amen. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. Amen. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. Amen.
us in exchange for our lives is gathering together from the north, south, and west his sons and his daughters and calling the rest. Give them up. Give them up. Give them up. Give them up. All those created for the glory of God and all those who ran away give them up 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 give them up
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you this morning. We're so grateful for your presence. Thank you, Lord, that you never leave us or forsake us. We're so grateful, Lord, for your faithfulness. Even when we fail, Lord, you cannot. You remain faithful. We just ask you, Lord, to bless and continue to bless the remainder of this service and everyone that's here. And we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Give them a hand. Praise God. Thank the Lord. You have to let him out. He locked the door on him. Praise the Lord. I want to first of all thank uh, Suzanne for standing in for me last week and doing a great job, by the way. And uh, we were we were in Arkansas. Praise the Lord. At a wedding for my granddaughter and who doesn't live in Arkansas, by the way, why she picked Arkansas to be, I know why, because she didn't want a birth certificate or a wedding certificate from Oklahoma. Ah, she didn't want it from Arkansas, so no, I, never mind. Forget everything I said. I have no idea why I was even there, except that somebody got married that I know, praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, we're on, a, we're on a roll here today, praise God. Somebody's asking me about, how, talking about marriage, you know, how Sally and I have survived over 35 years of marriage, and I said, well, we have, we have a date night. Not have a, something to eat, and maybe dance or whatever. And she goes on Tuesdays, and I go on Friday. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, works, out, <laughs> works out real well, praise God. All right, thank the Lord. I appreciate the uh, testimonies, and thank you for giving us the privilege of uh, praying with you for the needs that were mentioned here today and so that we can all celebrate when God answers them. Amen? As he has. Praise the Lord. But I want us to start in the, the book of Luke, uh, chapter 4, and we'll read verses 16 through 19. Now, how many of you know that Jesus, uh, he was born a man? Now, he was fully God, but he didn't operate as God. He operated as a man anointed of God. And the other thing I think people often miss is that Jesus didn't know naturally. I mean, he wasn't born and he just knew he was God. Right. The scripture says he grew in stature and in knowledge and wisdom and uh, in favor with God and with man. And so Jesus found himself in the scriptures. Yes. And he found out that he was anointed and called of God. Amen to be the sacrifice for all of humanity. And I think what happens to us as Christians is we, f we look at the Bible as a rule book, uh, a moral compass of some kind. And it is that, but that isn't our intention for reading it. We read it for the same reason Jesus read it, to find out who we are, to find out what our identity is exactly. in God, how God sees us. And then we do, hopefully, do what Jesus did, and that's live out that life that God has declared to be ours. From that identity, from that reality, is how we are to live. And again, this is not about, I'm not talking about keeping rules and being a perfect person. I'm talking about the only way we're ever going to do, just like Jesus. Jesus never would have done the miracles that he did as a man, anointed of God, if he didn't understand his 
relationship with God, that God was his father, and that God had anointed him. And that's exactly what we're going to read here. But I want us to put ourselves in this context because we are sons of God. We are children of God. And we need to recognize that if we're ever going to do what the scripture tells us we are to do, greater works than Jesus did, we're going to have to get the same kind of revelation that Jesus had. It just won't work any other way. It doesn't happen out of our hard work. It doesn't happen out of our own personal holiness or righteousness. It happens as a result of our relationship with God, our oneness with him, and our awareness of that. Amen? So I love that song. We were just, the song just before the last one where we were talking about setting captives free. Amen? That's our job. We've been called to set captives free. So I want to talk to you about our identity and how we are going to move into all of the promises of God in these last days so that we can see the glory of God revealed again through his children. Amen. Amen. Jesus, the firstborn of many brethren. We are his brothers and sisters, amen, in the Lord. So speaking of Jesus, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Everybody say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's upon you, and it's also in you. Praise the Lord if you're a believer. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen? So Jesus said he was anointed by God, to preach deliverance to the captives. How many of you know when you got born again, you received the Holy Spirit, the anointing, which is the anointing. Jesus is the anointed one, and it's his spirit that was sent back to us. Amen. So we are anointed with the same anointing, amen, as believers. And Jesus said that he was anointed by God to preach deliverance to the captives. Now this is important. He didn't say he was anointed to pray for deliverance. For the captives. Now prayer is important. Don't, don't read anything into what I'm saying there. But the word tells us to preach deliverance. Amen. Not to pray for deliverance. Praise the Lord. Jesus has already delivered mankind from Satan's powers. And we're supposed to be preaching the good news of this deliverance. Not begging God to deliver people. He has done everything needed in order for their deliverance. We just have to tell them. I've been delivered. Praise the Lord. Anybody remember that old song, gospel song? We need to tell people they have been delivered. Yes. Amen. They just need to receive the deliverance. Praise God. All right, let's go to 1 John with this in mind. Then let's go to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear that we, what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All right? So, beloved, now we are the sons of God. Now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear that what we shall be, but we know that when he, he shall appear, we'll be like him, because we'll see him as he is. Praise the Lord. All right, go to 2 Corinthians then, and chapter 10. 2 Corinthians 10, uh, verses 4 through 7. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. Verses 17 and 18. Same chapter. chapter. He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord, for not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. Amen. Amen. So we're saved by grace, and Jesus said on the cross, as he gave up the Holy Spirit, 
He said, it is finished. Amen? It is finished. It's all done, and it's all been done by the grace of God. But grace isn't a, a term, and it's, it's not a doctrine. It's not a buzzword. It's not the words of a song. It's not the prayer that we pray before we eat. It's not leniency or niceness. It's not something that can be domesticated or something that completely be understood. Grace is what flows through Jesus' veins. Yes. Amen? Like a river. Yes. Praise the Lord. It cleanses us. Amen? It saves us. It delivers us. It makes us one with Him. Somebody said it's not the things that happen to a person in life that cause them to fail or to succeed, but what they believe about the things that happen to them. Right. It's the knowledge of the truth that sets us free. Amen? Amen? It isn't what the Bible says. It's what we believe about what the Bible says that makes the difference. Amen? So God is truth. His word is truth. And God says we are his sons right now. We're not trying to be better so that God will accept us as his sons. God has declared us already to be his sons right now. We're more than conquerors, amen, through him that loved us. Praise the Lord. To be more than a conqueror means that we can enjoy the conquest, amen, without the fight. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I know you're thinking, yeah, but I've had my battles. Yeah, you've been doing a lot of struggling maybe, but Jesus already won the battle. Hallelujah. What we need to do is identify that the battle's won and we are just riding the wave of that victory. Praise the Lord. We, we have to rest and believe in what Jesus has already done. Right. Amen. That's called faith. The just shall live by faith. Praise the Lord. Okay, back to 1 John again, if you would. John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. For now we're the sons of God. Right? Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. All right? The image that God puts in His Word is the image that you have to have of yourself. And it's not the image that you might want to pick up on once in a while. It's the image that you have to have of yourself. You've got to have the image that God has of you if you expect to fulfill the place that He has designed for you in the kingdom. If Jesus had just stumbled through His life being a really nice guy and never became aware of the image of who He was based on the Word of God, we'd all still be in a big mess. There would be no healing, there'd be no deliverance, there'd be no salvation. You can't see yourself the way the devil says you are and still fulfill God's purpose for you. And He has a purpose for each and every one of us. I know so many people go through their entire life and never discover their purpose. The reason they don't discover their purpose is because they don't have an image of the individual that God called to that purpose. Even though it's them. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, uh, you know, when I got saved, you know, I had been a heroin addict. I had, you know, done drugs for years, uh, alcohol, uh, all, just all kinds of relationships and in and out of trouble and all sorts of other things. And when God began to deal with me about preaching, see, my image of me was just the same guy, but not going to hell. I mean, I still saw myself as being this person. I knew I was saved, and I knew I wasn't going to hell, but I thought, but still, I got all this baggage, you know? I didn't realize even then that God had an image of me that he was trying to get me to see so that I could fulfill the purpose that he had for my life. As long as I saw myself the way others had seen me and the way I had seen myself, I was incapable of ever doing really all that God wanted me to do. Amen? So, and it isn't, you know, okay, so you say, well, <laughs> big deal, you're preaching to 20 people. That's got nothing to do with it. Right. It's my purpose. Right. See, I'm successful 
in my mind, simply because I'm doing what God told me to do. It isn't about numbers. It isn't about dollars and cents. It isn't about all of that. I'm totally content, and not that I don't get frustrated when people aren't here, but I'm saying I'm totally content by just doing what God told me to do. Yes. Now, everybody's not going to be preaching from a pulpit, but everybody's going to be preaching. Everybody's preaching somewhere, sometime, some place, always. That's what we do. Why? Because we've been anointed to set captives free. We've been anointed, amen, to bring the day of, uh, of deliverance and mercy to the world for them to see. The same thing that Jesus brought is what we continue to do. Signs and wonders will follow this. Yeah. Amen? Signs and wonders won't come just because we beg and plead for something. Signs and wonders will come when we begin to preach deliverance to the captive. Amen. When we begin to tell him, you've been set free, man. I don't know if you know it or not. I mean, based, uh, you know, based on what I'm seeing in your life, you probably don't understand this yet. But as far as God's concerned, he's dealt with all your sin. Right. You just have to accept it. You just have to receive it. I mean, this is a done thing. We still looking out here at people with all kinds of issues thinking, man, they got to get their act together. They, they're in big trouble. They need to clean up. They need to straighten up. No, they need somebody to preach deliverance to them. They need somebody to tell them God has done everything God's going to do for you. He's not mad at you. He's not holding this against you. He has set you free, amen, so that you can rise to everything God has intended for your life. Amen. So that he can bless you, amen, as who you really are. A son of God. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 17. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We, we just really need to get to the place where we see ourselves how God sees us. I mean, you want to talk about getting free. And it's not arrogance anymore. It's not about being arrogant. It's about just being able to relax. And say, you know what? It's all good with Jesus. It's all good. I get up every day. Because his mercies are new every morning. Thank God. Because I've worn out all of them from yesterday. By the time today got here, I, I'd already used up all the mercy from yesterday. Praise the Lord. But he said, don't worry about tomorrow because the evil tomorrow will be sufficient to itself. There's going to be bad times coming for everybody everywhere all the time. There always is. There's always bad stuff. Amen. But the Lord also told us that we are to pray that prayer so that we'll say, and keep me from the evil of this day. Yes. Amen? I don't worry, I'm not worried about the evil that's coming 20 years from now. I, I'm only dealing with the evil that's here right now. In fact, there's a prayer, I, I got a prayer on my, uh, on, above the vanity in our uh, bathroom. It says, uh, you know, it, it increase my territory, you know, enlarge my area of, of influence and keep me from evil so that I don't cause hurt to somebody else. Right. Amen? Amen? I read it every day, but I still do it every once in a while. I still cause hurt to somebody else. I may still be a little short-tempered or, 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 or say something without really thinking, you know? But God keeps me from the evil of that. Amen? He, he protects us. Amen? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Praise the Lord. All things are new in the realm of of the Spirit. Amen? Praise. Praise the Lord. Jesus said He makes all things new. Amen? If you're born again, you're new. Praise the Lord. Whatever your age is, you're still new. You're not what you used to be. God cannot see you that way. Praise God. We aren't sinners saved by grace. We've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Praise the Lord. We have the greater one in us. Yes. Amen? We are strengthened with all might according to His glorious power. Hallelujah. That's grace. Strengthened with all might according to His glorious power. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 1. Let's read verses 27 and 28. You know, see these uh, guys were talking about creating a, a new style of house or a new house or whatever. That's not true. God created everything, the earth, the trees, and whatever. Anything we do with that after the fact is, is something we're making, right? We're not creating it. It was already created. The house was created as a tree. We're just taking the benefit of that creation and then doing something with it, right? That's what's happening here in Genesis 127. So God created man in his own image. 
In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Yeah. Now, that is the image that was inside of God before he created man. What? Dominion. Yes. He's God. He rules, right? He this is the image that God has in Himself that He is going to put into man. Are you still with me? Praise the Lord. Did you notice God created some things and He made other things? Now it says created, but actually that's a, 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 not a, an accurate translation. He created the earth and everything in it. Amen? The earth was created, and then in, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, He forms man. What did he form him out of? In a sense, you could say he created man, but the fact is he created everything, and then he formed man out of that creation. Yes. Right. right? Out of the dust of the earth, out of the elements that were already here, however scientifically you want to look at it, we'll just keep it simple, and out of the dirt, and out of the dust, which is simply the elements, everything that we have in us. Amen? Right. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. So the earth was created, and then God, from that earth, from his creation, he forms man out of the dust of the ground. He didn't create man. He formed man. He molded him out of the dust of the ground. And he was nothing but just a, a, a piece of that creation. Right. Amen? And God created the earth, and then he took the dirt and the dust that he was already had created, and he formed man's body. And then God breathed the breath of life into the man, and he became a living soul. Mm -hmm. God's putting his image in the man. Right. What did he create? He created him a spirit being. Right. The body was, you could almost say superfluous. It, it was just something he had to have to put that spirit in. Right. He wasn't consumed with the idea of this body. What he was consumed about was something that he could get his image into. Praise the Lord. So we're created in the image of God. It was the life of God. God breathed into Adam the life that was inside of himself. Amen? Adam became a duplication of God kind or God's species, if you will. Amen? He became like God. Yes. Right? Yes. Praise the Lord. God is a spirit. We're created in the image of God. We were to be God, little g, ruler, which is what God is. He's the ruler. It says the same thing about Satan because he usurped the authority of Adam. He became the God of this world or the ruler, principalities of the air, of the natural realm. Amen. So we were to be God or little g God, ruler over the earth, not God big G. We are the sons of God. Right. So I talk about this you know, how God sees us, and I think sometimes people think, well, that's just being crazy, that's blasphemous. No, that's Bible. Yes, it, is. it is the Bible. We will judge, rule over angels. Not as men, as gods, as little g, as sons of God. Yes. Amen? Look at John chapter 10, uh, verses 30 through 33. John 10, 30 through 33. This image of us is something that Jesus had so profoundly understood that he went about doing the miraculous not as God, as a man, aware of the image that God had placed in him, who he was in God. Right. One. I and my Father are one. Mm -hmm. He didn't, I mean, we got to get this because he was doing stuff with the same uh, ability and resources that you and I have right now. Exactly the same. He didn't have one thing more, amen, for, his, for this power of God to operate through him other than his understanding, his revelation of who he was. Exactly. The Spirit of the Lord's on me because he's called me to do this stuff. Lord. If he called me to do it, he's going to have to supply the ability to do it because he's not going to do it on his own. Right. Amen. So I and my Father are one, Jesus said. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you uh, uh, from my Father, for which of those works are you going to stone me? 
And the Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Well, the church has been stumbling over this ever since. God made him God, little g, son of God. God made us sons of God. Now, how are you going to be a son of God without being holy, without being righteous, without being, uh, uh, you know, separate, amen, from sin? It's impossible because none of that is in God. You, we got our DNA when we got born again. We got our DNA from God. And there is no sin in Him. Now we still have the, 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 the capability because of the apparatus, because of this flesh, to do evil. But that's why the scripture I was talking about Wednesday night says that, you, you know, in essence it says you can judge my actions, but you can't judge my spirit. It's already been judged. It's already been declared perfect and righteous and holy. Amen. Amen. It's the Spirit of God. Amen. Joined with my Spirit. One Spirit. I and the Father are one. You can say the very same thing Jesus said and not stutter. I mean, it's the truth. Right. He has reconciled us to the Father. Thank you, Jesus. That Spirit that's in you is the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God. Same Spirit that came back from Christ. Amen. Amen. Religious people get disturbed when you start talking about this. When you even imply that you are righteous. Yeah. True. Because they're still judging everything from the external. Or they're looking, as Tim said, they're looking back at something that happened 20 years ago or 10 years ago. Or maybe 5 minutes ago in my case. Yeah. But it doesn't change the fact that I'm still the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. I am one with God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Religious people get upset over what Jesus said about me. What Jesus said about you. They get upset about what Paul says about you and I. They even get upset about what God says about you and I. Religious spirits don't want you to see yourself through the eyes of God. And if you think that's not true... I can tell you the reason, you know, before the Reformation, the Bible was literally chained to the pulpit. Right. And it was in a language that only a tiny percentage of the population of the earth could read. And you had to get your information about you and about God from them. Right. And they kept us in darkness uh, and kept themselves in darkness. Until Martin Luther came along. <laughs> it's amazing because he had this revelation of the just shall live by faith. And this guy is a raving uh, anti-Semitic. Right. Exactly. Read any of the history of uh, He had a great revelation. It was the truth. And God gave him great revelation. But this guy, he hated Jews. That's right. he did. I mean, I don't know where his head was. Jesus is a Jew. Right. You know, all of the apostles were Jews. All of the disciples, all the early believers were Jews. Right. Praise God. But here is the dividing line. People who see themselves the way God sees them and people who see themselves the way religion sees them. Right. Amen. That literally is what will divide the people that God's going to use in the last day. Look at uh, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. Yes. Now, it doesn't say as He is, we will someday be. It doesn't say as He is, one of these days when we get to heaven, we'll be like that. No, it says as He is right now, so are we here on this planet. Well, you ought to shout about it anyway, praise the Lord, <laughs> just for my sake. That's good news, man. I mean, that is the ultimate good news. As He is, highly favored, loved of the Father, perfect in every way, my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased, so are you in this world. 
in this present moment. Now you are a son of God. Now you have access to all of the kingdom's resources. Yes. Praise God. Just like Jesus did. Amen. John chapter 10 uh, verses 34 through 36 now. We read 32 and 33 I think. This is a continuation of that. Jesus answered them, it is not written, in, is it not written in your law? I said, speaking of God, ye are gods. This is when the Jews freaking out because he says, I'm the son of God, I and my father are one, and they're going crazy. And he said, your own scriptures, read them. They say that you are gods, little g. If he called them gods, little g, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I'm the Son of God? Yeah. Amen. He's laying it out there for us, folks. We are the sons of God. We are God's little g. We are the children of God. We are the siblings of Christ. Now, you don't need anything more than what you have to do the works of Christ. The only thing you need is a revelation of your identity in Christ. Yes. Yes. As I started out, it's not the things that happen to us in life that define us. It's our attitude about the things that happen to us that end up defining us. You have, Tim was talking about it. You have two people raised in the same neighborhood, under the same circumstances, same pressures, same problems, same lack, same whatever it might be. And likewise, you could have two in a very, uh, you know, high end, lots of money, lots of opportunities, education, everything else. Two people side by side, same opportunities, and they go totally different directions. Why? It isn't because of what they has happened to them in their life. It's what they think about what has happened to them in their life that determines them. Because they have an image. But that's just me. And that is them. That's exactly my point. Good word. Because, let's face it, crap happens to everybody. But everybody doesn't crap out because it does. It's exactly right. It's exactly right? I mean, it's, there are times some ha things happen and you just kind of so move on. Other times it happens to devastate you. Stay in bed for three days. Right? right? Depressed, bummed out. Why? Not because the thing was any different or any worse, but your perception of it, how you dealt with it, got altogether different. Amen? So, praise the Lord. Let's uh, go to Psalms chapter 82. Psalms 82, verse 1. Just to show you out of the mouth of two or three witnesses so you don't think I'm just trying to twist this into something. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Now, if you're, in the original, it says Elohim stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the Elohim. Little gods or children of God. He's talking about us. Yes. We, are, we are the family. Listen, if we have children and they're humans and God has children, they're gods. Yeah. It's that simple. Uh -huh. They're not the God, but they're the offspring of God. They are gods. That's why you judge angels. That's why we're coming back to this earth. We're not going to spend forever floating around in heaven with a little harp and a diaper. We're coming back here to rule and to reign on this earth as the gods that we were declared to be when we were born again. In the garden. With dominion. They're not mad. They got a family reunion to go to, praise the Lord. <laughs> and fortunately for them, it's not in Arkansas. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anyway, praise the Lord. All right, all right, let's go. Second Peter, uh, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. And there's nothing wrong with Arkansas, by the way. I like Arkansas. I like Arkansas. We go there every year, not just for weddings. It's a good place. I like Arkansas. 
Why do you say that? I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Now, I know what you're saying. We lived in Texas for a number of years, and we've spent a lot of time in the South. People are a little more laid back and a little more open. And after all, this is Iowa, and we think everybody's against us, so we're a little <laughs> paranoid to begin with. Anyway, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world. How? We're given these exceeding great and precious promises. Our identity. Yeah. By my stripes you're healed. Yeah. I became poor that you could become rich. Right. I've delivered you from all unrighteousness. Right. right? So he's given unto us these great promises. And it's by that reality of who we are, that true identity of us, that we become partakers yeah. or beneficiaries of the divine nature. We have the divine nature, but you can have the divine nature and not get any benefit from it not really be a partaker of what the divine nature does. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? That's what he's talking about here. We've got to get the image of ourselves that God has of ourselves if we're ever going to do what God has called us to do. Yeah. It's like me, you know, yeah. it's like in the military. And I'd say, all right, uh, you three, I want you to take that bunker. Right. And they're standing there with no weapons, you know, nothing to be able to facilitate what it is I've just given them an order to do. Right. Wouldn't that be idiotic? Right. Yeah. Why don't I just put a gun to their head and shoot them right here instead of making them walk across the field to get killed? Right? right? No, you, you equip them. You train them. You get them ready. And then you give them the confidence that you can do this because of the training that you've had, because of the weaponry that you possess, right? Mm -hmm. That's what God's done. He's equipped us. He's trained us. He's told us. So that we'll do it in his power and not try to do it in our own. Which is what the church has been doing for the most part for the last 2,000 years. Right. Trying to do something that God has ordained for us to do, yes. but trying to do it in our own strength. Right. Trying to do it without a revelation or complete understanding of who we are. The image that God has of us and the image that he has placed inside of each one of us. Amen? The body of Christ... Is, I'm telling you, a, you can call this a prophecy, but it's just a quotation, basically. The, the body of Christ will fulfill God's purpose in the earth. It will. It has to. Yes. Amen? When we understand this truth and begin to act as though it were true. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about being in Christ. Uh -huh. remember, remember when you first got saved, and maybe it still happens to you occasionally because it does to most of us. And you were just riding the high of just getting saved. And, whoa, baby, I mean, this is, this is great. You know, everything's good between me and God. And it is a couple of days you maybe you, you say something, you do something, you have a thought, whatever. And immediately the enemy's right there saying, you hypocrite. Come on, you man. phony. You're not saved. You wouldn't have said that. You wouldn't have thought that. You wouldn't have done this. Come on. Right? He's trying to steal your identity. That's what he's always doing is trying to steal your identity. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the first thing he has to do is convince you that you have no power, that you have no ability, that you have no favor with God. It's just you against the enemy. Amen? Every lie he tells you is a, an, an attack against the image that God has of you, that he wants you to have. That's why we can take no confidence in the flesh. Because the flesh will fail you every time. That's right. That's right. But your spirit is the spirit of God. It's one with God. It's like Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Yes. You've got to see yourself as one with God. Amen? John 17, verse 23. This is my one of my favorites, and I'm always, I, I remind this uh, uh, to my wife. And in fact, I'd like to put up more signs. i got ones on my side that are all pretty much, you know, Get it together. You know, it's okay. You made it. But I'd like to put some up on her side that say, And them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them, and thou hast loved me. In I in them, that's you. Thou in me, God. And they that they may be made perfect. Perfect. We have been perfected. The scripture says in another place, in the beloved. Yes. Yes. I'm perfect. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
could have been a little like an amen. I was hoping for an amen. But I don't need your, you know, I don't need your approval. I'd like to have it. I don't need it. Don't judge me. I am perfect. God said I'm perfect. Yes. Perfect. Now it's a little hard for you to swallow too, but it's still the truth. It's the image that God has declared. Because God sees us through the finished work of the cross. Amen? Everything pre-cross points to the cross. Everything after the cross points back to it. It is finished. It will be one day finished for those, amen, uh, that were pre-cross. They were, by faith, offering up all kinds of sacrifices, doing all the things that they were doing in hopes that one day that ultimate sacrifice would take care of every sin that they had ever committed. And everybody from the cross forward looks back and says, it is finished. My healing is a finished product. My deliverance is a finished product. My acceptance in the beloved is a finished product. It's, it is done. Amen? Amen. Colossians 1, 26 and 27. Got to talk really fast now so we can be out here on time. Even the mystery which hath been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. All right, Colossians chapter 3, uh, verses 9 and 10. See, so we get, you know, I've said this before, but it's true, because I, I, I do it. We read, and we read it without ever putting ourselves into it. We read it like it's a textbook or it's a, you know, it's a self-help or DIY thing or something. And it's not. It's an identity book. It's a book of identity. It is a book that declares who we are, who God is, and who we are in Him. And we've looked at it trying to find, you know, quick fixes and, and, and ways of doing things when it's about who we are. If we ever understand who we are, we'll just do it. We'll just do the stuff. There isn't like a three-step plan. I, I, I mean, I'm sorry. We go through all the, we have healing classes and healing seminars. I get it. I know, I know, I understand the reason for it. But it, it isn't necessary if you really understand who you are. You have the ability to do it. And there isn't a right way and a wrong way. There's just a doing, a declaration of what God has already created, amen, and already done. And we just declare it. If we understand who we are, we will do it. Yes. It's natural for us to be supernatural. It's not weird. We get weird in order to convince people that we're supernatural. All right, I mean we, I'm, I'm talking about people in general, get all flaky and squirrely acting and everything because they think it, I, then other people look at them and say, wow, they are really spiritual. Yeah. No, J Jesus didn't. You didn't see him, ha, 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 and I get, I mean, I know we get excited, I get excited, so I'll get loud sometimes and do things, but that's not the Holy Ghost, that's just me responding, amen, to some revelation or to, to, to what God's doing. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just that don't mistake that for being the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is gentle, it's a dove. The, the Spirit comes whenever we are, whenever we recognize who we are, the same way it did with Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach deliverance to the captives. To set them free. Amen. Praise God. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Right? We put on the new man. That's the, the spirit man. That's one with God which is renewed in the knowledge. Now, my spirit knows everything I will ever need to know. Amen? We talked about it Wednesday night. It knows the mind of God because it's the spirit of God. It's not searching. The spirit's not searching to find out something about God. Amen? 
The Spirit is coming to my spirit to reveal me what I don't know about God. I just have to be willing to accept it. Because my spirit knows right from wrong. And I'm not talking about now good behavior, bad behavior. I'm saying it knows the difference between what I can do in God and what I can do in my flesh. So it always motivates me to operate by the Spirit, which is simply being in agreement with the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Yes. See, in us is this knowledge of the image of who we really are. But that's why Satan has to get you into the flesh, operating from your carnal mind, which is an enmity with God. It's not an enemy of God, but it's, it's at odds with God's thinking. Right? Yeah. Because your mind tells you, 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 God can't use you. You weren't perfect this week. You need to go on a 30-day you know, fast and pray you know, an hour a day and, and read all the Psalms and the Proverbs and, and, and just get, get it all together. And then... Then God might use you if it's really a desperate situation. But that's not the word of God. God said that if you believe, greater works than these shall you do. Just because you believe in the image that God has of you, that God has placed in you, Christ in you, this great mystery, the hope of glory, so that God can be released into this earth. His body. Amen? We are His body. Praise God. When you get saved, something cosmic happens. It's beyond earth. I mean, it's beyond the natural. Jesus and you become one. You become inseparable. Hallelujah. Don't don't think of yourself apart from him. I think one of the reasons we've done that is because we feel like, well, it's like Tim said, how are you going to hide? Where are you going to go? David said, if I make my bed in hell, if I fly up into the heaven, he's there. He's wherever I am. And so we, we, we want to separate ourselves from him because we know we're going to do something stupid. Right? Of course we pull the shades because we'll go to jail if the neighbors turn us in. God may not call the cops, but the neighbor will. Right? But, but by the same token, we're separating ourselves, we're alienating ourselves from God. Right? Well, why? As he said, he's there. He sees it. He knows it. He knew it before you did it. And he's still there with you. Praise the Lord. So we've got to realize, even when I'm doing dumb things, God's with me. And I don't need to pretend like he's not, and I don't need to kind of withdraw and hide and act like, okay, I'm not a Christian for five minutes here. How many of you have done that? You know, I just, I'm, I'm just going to lay down the anointing just for a moment. I'll, get it, I'll get, go right back after it as soon as I slap this person or do whatever it is I feel is necessary to, you know, the right hand of fellowship or something. <laughs> The truth is, we need to understand grace and the image that God has of us so that even when we foul up, we're not alienated or we're not separating ourselves from God. He's not separating himself, himself from us. Yes. Amen? Don't think of yourself apart from God because he doesn't think of himself apart from you. God will never leave you. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. He cannot think of you without being part of you. He never thinks of himself as, you know, well, I really like that kid, but man, he is such a screw up. I've got to give him some time out here, you know. No, he never leaves us. He never forsakes us because the image that he has placed in us is identical to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, 4 through 7. Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 7. See, it's amazing. I said, I've, I've talked about this before, and I, I think sometimes I'm not, I, I'm not, 
articulate enough to get across what I'm trying to say, but grace, you know, to religious people, if it's taken to its ultimate end, is scandalous. It's the power of God unto salvation. It's the power of everything that God does. Behind it is grace. But it's scandalous to religious people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace you're saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, where is Jesus seated? The right hand of God. The place of power. That's what the right hand represents. It wields the sword. It's the place of authority, the place of power. Mm. Now, you could say Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, and, of course, we're seated with him in that same location. We have the same authority, the same power of God. Now, I know God is invisible, so he takes up all space. So how big would his hand be? And how far do you got to go to get there? Because we're talking about the spirit realm. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. Everywhere, all at once. Right. Because so are we. And you'll know that as soon as you give up this earthly veil. Right. When you, your eyes pop open in the spirit realm, you haven't traveled 50 million miles right. away. Amen? <laughs> You're right here. You're just not in this body. You're free. Praise the Lord. Because you're with God. You're one with God. I don't even know how to talk about it mathematically, but the truth is you can be anywhere, any, anytime. Jesus shows us an example of that by, you know, he's with his disciples and he just goes through a wall, right. walks through a wall. Right. He's here and then he's off into the sky. Right. My guess is there's really no time involved because this is all outside of time. It's, it's just time to us. We're thinking of space and time because we can't deal with it any other way. But the truth is, you don't have to figure it out. It'll just be. Yes. That's how you'll know all things when you get there. Oh. <laughs> Praise <laughs> the Lord. You won't need a, you know, a slide ruler and, you know, and a calculator. and You won't have to understand calculus or anything. Else. You can just, you'll just do it. Praise the Lord. So that's good news because those who can do and those who can't teach Praise the Lord. You'll just be doing it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace we saved, and hath raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come yes. he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ. Yes. Yes. Grace is a big deal to God. It's everything to God. And it's the thing that's going to bring him glory throughout eternity. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is the power. This is the scandal, if you will, of grace. That God just pours it out on the undeserving. You know, on the unmerited. It's a scandal to the religious world because they, we haven't earned it. We haven't done enough good stuff. But God just says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well placed, and I have anointed him to preach deliverance. Hallelujah. The acceptable year of the Lord. This acceptable year has been going on for 2,000 years now, and it will continue until the church is raptured. God's acceptance of man. Praise the Lord. It's grace. It challenges. It relieves. It comforts. It provokes. And it forgives. Praise the Lord. Last scripture, and we'll close. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 again, back to the beginning. Now are we the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, don't be judging externally. 
We are the sons of God. When he shows up, we'll know him because we'll be like him. It's a promise from God. It's a guarantee from the Lord. If you believe it the way God believes it, nothing shall be impossible to you. We've been made in his image righteous. It's the hope of glory. It's the hope of God that we get the same image of ourselves that he has of us so that his work, so his glory can fill the earth. Amen? Amen. So that he can accomplish what he's put us here to accomplish. He didn't leave us here to do this without any weapons, without any ability, without anything except determination. Amen? Amen? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Get an image that agrees with God's image and nothing shall be impossible for you. Yes, sir. Yeah. There you go. That's the image that he has, that you're going to be successful, that you're going to be powerful, yes. that nothing shall come between you and the purpose that God has for your life. Glory. If thou canst believe, Hallelujah. everything is possible. Yes. All things are possible. Amen. Don't separate yourself from the Lord. Right. Embrace him. Yeah. He's given us grace so that we can. Yeah. And through embracing him, we'll embrace the lost. Glory. We'll begin to preach Deliverance. If we want to do what Jesus did, we've got to do what Jesus did. That's right. Amen? Amen? And God has equipped us so that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Yes. Amen? We are more than conquerors. Mm-hmm. He's already done the conquering. We get the benefits. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Keep the image. And nothing will be restrained from you. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here today. Shake hands with one another. Tell them, I got an image. Hallelujah. Be blessed in Jesus' name.